Tonight is a teaching session, and the title of this message is, Does the Holy Ghost Serve His Purpose in Your Life? We live in the dispensation of the Holy Ghost. This is the age that the Holy Ghost is working on planet Earth. We live in the final hour of the great outpouring of the Holy Ghost. And the Holy Ghost yearns and desires to work in and through every yielded vessel that will yield to him. God the Father had his dispensation in the Old Testament. God the Son, Jesus Christ, had his dispensation in the four Gospels. And then on the day of Pentecost, the dispensation of the Holy Ghost began. And it will not end until the rapture takes place. In my last sermon, the Holy Ghost working with the mind of Christ, I told you that when a spirit-filled child of God comes to the place of taking on the mind of Christ and allowing it to operate at all times, this is when the person of the Holy Ghost living within will have complete liberty to perform all of his duties in perfection that he was ordained to perform by Jesus Christ. And what are these duties that the Holy Ghost is to perform? This is the topic of tonight's message. Shortly before Jesus fulfilled the plan of redemption and ascended back to heaven, he gave his followers special information and instruction about the person of the Holy Ghost in John's Gospel, chapters 14 through 16. Jesus told them about the person of the Holy Ghost and laid out the duties that he is to perform for them and through them. In these chapters, Jesus refers to the Holy Ghost as a comforter. It is one of his greatest duties. John's Gospel, chapter 14, verse 16, Jesus said, And I will pray the Father, and he shall give you another comforter, that he may abide with you forever. This journey we travel through life is difficult, for we endure many disappointments and sorrows, tribulations and persecutions. Calamity can strike at a moment's notice without warning, even unto losing a loved one in death. Well, in the Holy Ghost, we have a great comforter to help us in time of distress, one that will abide with us forever, all the way from earth to glory. The Apostle Paul received a great revelation of this comfort given by the Holy Ghost. Romans chapter 8, verse 26. Likewise, the Spirit also helpeth our infirmities. For we know not what we should pray for as we ought, but the Spirit itself maketh intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. Sometimes the troubles and burns of this life are so great and the trial so fiery that for a time the human mind becomes clouded, tired, weary, disoriented, unable to think straight. You don't know what to pray for or even how to pray. And in these dark hours, the Holy Ghost will raise up a standard and make intercession for you. Isaiah chapter 59, verse 19. When the enemy shall come in like a flood, the Spirit of the Lord shall lift up a standard against him. The Apostle Paul wrote in the fifth chapter of Galatians that the Holy Ghost would produce nine spiritual fruits in your mind to comfort and bless you, as well as to comfort and bless others. These are divine fruits of love, joy, peace, gentleness, goodness, long-suffering, faith, meekness, and temperance. But remember, these fruits will not be produced with any regularity 
unless you have taken on the mind of Christ. Another great duty of the Holy Ghost, he is to be your guide. This journey through life is filled with twists and turns. The devil seeks to lay traps and pitfalls along the way, trying to ensnare your soul. In the person of the Holy Ghost, you have a guide that will lead you through every valley and direct you over every mountaintop. He will give you the divine wisdom to make, imp to make important decisions in your life. However, you must look to him. If you stop to consider what would Jesus say or what would Jesus do in certain situations and you really want to know, the Holy Ghost will give it to you. John chapter 16, verse 13. How be it when he, the spirit of truth, is come, he will guide you into all truth. For he shall not speak of himself, but whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak. And he will show you things to come. First and foremost, the spirit of truth, the Holy Ghost, will guide you through the word of truth. And he will guide you away from that which is false, including false prophets and false doctrines. We must have the Holy Ghost in this final hour for this very purpose. Because the Apostle Paul wrote that in the last day, seducers would wax worse and worse, deceiving others and deceiving themselves. And Jesus himself warned of wolves in sheep's clothing. He said that in the last days, many false Christs and false prophets would arise to deceive many, that if it were possible, even the very elect would be deceived. However, the very elect filled with the Holy Ghost, yielding to him as a guide, will never be led astray because the Holy Ghost will guide a person only using truth. And this special guide has the ability to look into the future, into your future. Therefore, at times, he will guide you on a path that you may not understand or even desire. In these situations, you must trust his guidance and come under subjection to his leadership. It tells us in Proverbs chapter 3, verses 5 and 6, Trust in the Lord with all thine heart, and lean not unto thine own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy paths. The Lord will direct your paths. How? By your guide, the Holy Ghost. And as Jesus said, if the Holy Ghost deems it necessary... He will show you things to come in the future in order to encourage you or in order to prepare you for what lies ahead on your divine mission. And this is what happened to the Apostle Paul as he made his way to Jerusalem for the last time. And I read in Acts chapter 20, verses 22 and 23. And now behold... I go bound in the spirit unto Jerusalem, not knowing the things that shall befall me there, save that the Holy Ghost witnesseth in every city, saying that bonds and afflictions abide me. Then in Acts chapter 21, verses 10 and 11, and as we tarried there many days, there came down from Judea a certain prophet named Agabus. And when he was come unto us, he took Paul's girdle and bound his own hands and feet and said, Thus saith the Holy Ghost, So shall the Jews at Jerusalem bind the man that owneth this girdle and shall deliver him into the hands of the Gentiles. Now, another great duty of the Holy Ghost. He is to be your teacher. He will teach those that he dwells in. John chapter 14, verse 26. But the Comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name, 
He shall teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance, whatsoever I have said unto you. It is so important for a child of God to be a student of God's Word because the more you study and know God's Word, the more material the Holy Ghost has to work with to teach you, the more liberty he will have to instruct you in the ways of divinity. 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verses 12 through 14. Now we have received not the spirit of the world, but the spirit which is of God, that we might know the things that are freely given to us of God, which things also we speak, not in the words which man's wisdom teacheth, but which the Holy Ghost teacheth, comparing spiritual things with spiritual. But the natural man receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness unto him, neither can he know them, because they are spiritually discerned. Now this last verse, verse 14, explains the reason why you must take on the mind of Christ. The Holy Ghost cannot teach the natural carnal mind. The natural mind will not accept or discern the Word of God, which is spiritual. The Holy Ghost is the teacher. You are the student, and the Word of God is your textbook. The Word is spiritual, and spiritual things must be spiritually discerned. Thus, the necessity of having the mind of Christ. And as you yield yourself to the Holy Ghost, he will open up your understanding to the Scriptures that in the past you would have struggled to understand. 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 15, study to show thyself approved unto God. In other words, study with the mind of Christ. Study with the help of of your teacher, the Holy Ghost. Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. And the only way you'll ever rightly divide the word of truth is with the help of your teacher, the Holy Ghost. And the more you study and memorize Scripture, the greater opportunity the Holy Ghost has to bring those scriptures to your remembrance in time of need. Scriptures that will bless you. Scriptures that will strengthen you. Scriptures that will comfort you. Or scriptures that will help you win a soul for Christ. John chapter 15 verse 26. But when the Comforter is come, whom I will send unto you from the Father, even the Spirit of truth, which proceedeth from the Father, he shall testify of me. The Holy Ghost was sent to testify of Jesus. This is important. Now, there are many definitions in Webster's Dictionary of testify. Two of these definitions apply to this scripture reading. Number one, to make a statement based on personal knowledge. Number two, to bear witness. The Holy Ghost was sent to teach you Jesus so you can become like Jesus. Now think about it for a moment. It is impossible to know someone that you have never met, to be like someone that you have never met. And it is impossible to know Jesus or be like him since he lived 2,000 years ago. That is, unless you have the Holy Ghost living within you to teach you Jesus. Because the Holy Ghost lived in Jesus on earth 2,000 years ago, and he has lived with Jesus in heaven for many, many ages. People can talk about Jesus. They can sing about Jesus. People can testify of Jesus and even preach about Jesus. But that does not mean they have 
true reality in Jesus. That does not mean they know Jesus. For the only way a person can know Jesus and have reality in him is through the Holy Ghost. So I want to ask you a question. If a person does not have reality in the teacher, the Holy Ghost, how can they have reality in Jesus? We have been instructed over and over in these services to learn Jesus. Learn Jesus. And how is this to happen? By taking your place at the feet of your teacher, the Holy Ghost. And letting him teach you Jesus. And letting him guide you into living reality of Jesus. Jesus declared of himself, I am the way, the truth, and the life. He is truth. Jesus is truth. And it will take the spirit of truth to teach you Jesus. But you must remember this. There's a price to pay, child of God, to take your place at the feet of the Holy Ghost. A price that goes far beyond yielding over your tongue, that he may speak through you. To be a student of the Holy Ghost, you must yield your mind to him and take on the mind of Christ. To be a student of the Holy Ghost, you must yield your time to him. Time in prayers, meditations, and study of God's word. And this means sacrificing time with entertainment, family and friends, and what you want to do. To be a student of the Holy Ghost, you must yield your will to him and take on the divine will of God for your life. To be a student of the Holy Ghost, on occasion, you must yield your food to him in Bible fastings. Matthew chapter 4, verse 4, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. Job chapter 23, verse 12, I have esteemed the words of his mouth more than my necessary food. You see, this is why so many churches have been a failure. Why they have quenched the person of the Holy Ghost completely. They do not have reality in Jesus or his power working in their midst. No signs, no wonders, no miracles or healings. And they're satisfied. They don't have the real born-again experience. Thus, they do not have the true baptism of the Holy Ghost. And they will not pay the price of prayer, fasting, and living in the Word. Therefore, they worship a Jesus of their own making. A Jesus made up of their own ideas, theories, and opinions. They do not worship the Christ of truth, but a Christ that complements, that conforms to their natural carnal mind. And as a result, all they have is just a form of godliness without any power. There is no sense in asking yourself, what would Jesus say? What would Jesus do unless you are yielded to your teacher, the Holy Ghost? For only he can give you such wisdom and knowledge of Jesus. Remember what Jesus told the seven churches in the book of Revelation. He that hath ears to hear, let him hear what the Spirit saith. John chapter 16, verses 14 and 15. Jesus, speaking of the Holy Ghost, he shall glorify me, for he shall receive of mine and shall show it unto you. All things that the Father hath are mine. 
Therefore said I that he shall take of mine and shall show it unto you. The Bible states that children of God are joint heirs with Jesus Christ. Meaning, what the Heavenly Father has willed to Jesus is also willed to the children of God. Therefore, the Holy Ghost will glorify Jesus by revealing to the children of God their divine heritage. And he will work that divine heritage in them and through them. A divine heritage made available through Jesus Christ and his sacrifice at Calvary. To illustrate the wisdom and knowledge of the Holy Ghost and his effectiveness as a teacher, I present to you the Apostle Paul, a man who wrote approximately two-thirds of the New Testament, more books in the New Testament than any other writer, and he did so under the leadership of the Holy Ghost. Now, the 12 disciples that lived with Jesus day after day during his earthly ministry, they learned much from Jesus. However, none of the 12 disciples knew Jesus and the ways of divinity like the Apostle Paul. And Paul was the one who never saw Jesus in the flesh. You see, when Jesus was here, the disciples knew Jesus as the Son of Man. The Apostle Paul learned Jesus as the Son of God through the Holy Ghost. What was the difference between the Twelve and Paul? Paul separated himself. Separated himself to be taught not by man, but by the Holy Ghost. Galatians chapter 1, verses 15 through 18. But when it pleased God, who separated me from my mother's womb and called me by his grace to reveal his Son in me, that I might preach him among the heathen, immediately I conferred not with flesh and blood. Neither went I up to Jerusalem to them which were apostles before me, but I went to Arabia and returned again to Damascus. Then after three years, I went up to Jerusalem to see Peter. In the desert, he learned Jesus by the teacher, the Holy Ghost. You know, at different times, Reverend Angley has told us that the Lord spoke to him after he graduated from Bible college. And the Lord told him that you have now been to man's school. Now you must be taught by the Holy Ghost. And in this final hour, the Lord is saying the same thing to every bridal company member. An invitation to enroll in the school of the Holy Ghost. To have the same opportunity, the same privilege to be taught the greatness of Jesus. To be taught by the greatest of all teachers. It is open registration in this dispensation of the Holy Ghost. But do you qualify for enrollment? Are you born again and living free from sin? Are you baptized in the Holy Ghost with the initial evidence of speaking in tongues as the Spirit gives the utterance? Have you taken on the mind of Christ so that the Holy Ghost will have a proper mind to work with and instruct? Again, there is a price to pay to attend this school. Will you still enroll? Will you pay the price? Will you make the sacrifice? To go to a school of higher learning, a person must pay tuition. Sacrifices must be made to receive such an education. Years ago, when I was a sinner, I graduated from a university with a degree in business administration. To earn this degree, I made many sacrifices to pay for my tuition, books, and other expenses. I worked different jobs throughout my high school years and my university years. 
During my time at the university, I made many sacrifices. Sacrifices of my time. Sacrifices of my hobbies and, and entertainments. Sacrifices of my family and friends. And when I was not in class, I was usually working or studying. And when I graduated, I did so with good grades. And I did so almost debt-free. Now, the reason I tell you this is to make a point. If a sinner can be willing to make sacrifices, pay a great price for an earthly education, how much more should a child of God be willing to sacrifice for such a special spiritual education? Philippians chapter 3, verses 14 and 15, the A part. I press towards the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. Let us therefore, as many as be perfect, be thus minded. In other words, be willing to work and sacrifice for this prize. Be willing to lay aside anyone or anything that would keep you from answering the high calling of God to your life. It is the responsibility of the student to respond when the teacher calls class to order. And as a student of the Holy Ghost, you must come to order in his presence when he calls you, that you may be taught, blessed, edified, and receive more power. Do you have such reality in the person of the Holy Ghost in your life? Will you yield yourself completely to come into such reality? Will you trust the Holy Ghost to guide you day by day, guiding you into the prayer closet, guiding you into fastings, guiding you to a soul in need of help? And yes, at times, guiding you on a path that the flesh does not want to travel. How much of this earthly life are you willing to sacrifice that you may gain spiritually? To be a greater blessing in the kingdom in this final hour. Jesus said in Matthew chapter 10, verse 39, He that findeth his life shall lose it. And he that loseth his life for my sake shall find it. Romans chapter 12, verse 1. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that ye present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. Then in Hebrews chapter 12, verse 1. Wherefore, seeing we also are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses... Let us lay aside every weight and the sin which does so easily beset us, and let us run with patience the race that is set before us. Taking on the mind of Christ in its fullness and learning to yield yourself completely to the Holy Ghost continually, it does not happen overnight. You first must feel the absolute necessity of coming into this. You must be willing to pay the price. Then you must believe without a shadow of a doubt that you can and will come into it. And finally, you must diligently and patiently work towards the goal. It's like riding a bike. I remember when I was putting this message together, my thoughts went back to when I learned how to ride a bike. I was a little kid at the end of the allotment, and there were a lot of kids in my allotment. A lot of them were older than me. And as I got older, I'd watch them ride up and down the road, up and down the hills. And I determined one day I wanted to do the same. And so I got a bike, and my dad started to teach me. And you know what? It didn't matter how many times he turned loose and I fell to the ground. It didn't matter how many times I scraped my knees, bruised my elbows. I was determined to learn how to ride the bike. 
And one day when my dad turned me loose, I began to ride and I didn't come back. <laughs> so it is with the things of God. You don't give up. What's the old saying? If at first you don't succeed, you try and try again. Because God is faithful to his promises. In Hebrews chapter 11, verse 6, But without faith it is impossible to please him. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. He rewards those that use faith and diligently, patiently seek him. Sooner or later, the reward comes. Sinner, backslider, listening to this message tonight, feel the spirit of the Holy Ghost dealing with you. He's seeking to draw you to Calvary. He wants to use the blood of Jesus spilled at Calvary to wash away all of your sins, to give you eternal life. Yield to his drawing right now. The Bible tells us if we confess our sin, God is just and faithful to forgive us and to cleanse us of all unrighteousness. And you listening by way of radio and by way of television, let the Holy Ghost lead you to Calvary right now. And there you will find forgiveness of sin, freedom from all bondages, and you will receive eternal life. Believe in what God has promised and pray this prayer with me right now. Say, O oh God, I confess all of my sin before you. Forgive me, Father, and I will serve you the rest of my life. And I believe the power in the blood of Jesus washes away all of my sins, all of my sins. Say, come into my heart, Jesus. Come into my heart, Jesus. And if you meant that prayer, he's yours. And friend, what that means is you can have a miracle. You can have a healing for your body. When Jesus died on the cross, it was a twofold atonement, deliverance of sin and deliverance of all sickness, diseases, and afflictions. And you who are watching by way of television, you're sick in body. There's a disease or a deformity. And you listening by way of radio, put your hand against the listening device. If you're in need of prayer, put your hand against the screen. You watching by way of television and let the power of God do for you what no other power can do. Lord, in the name of Jesus, I bring the sick and afflicted to you, those with a great bondage, those with a deformity in their body. God, lay a healing hand upon each one. In the holy blood name of Jesus, heal, heal, heal. Let your blood power flow. Oh, God, set them free. Make them well, completely whole. Lord, do it for your honor and for your glory. In the name of Jesus, I pray. And amen. And friend, watch every improvement. Give God the honor, the praise, and the glory. And one great way to do so is by sending us your testimony, of what God did for you. You can send that testimony by mail or you can send it by email. Sending it to testimonies at ernestangely.org. And friend, we will rejoice in the Lord with you. And now I want to pray for those who are in need of the Holy Ghost. There are so many benefits of having the person of the Holy Ghost living within you. There's so much he will do for you in your life that he wants to do. He's ready to do. He's anxious to do. Let him come into you right now. Now I'm going to call the anointing down upon you and you get off to yourself and you start praising the Lord with your whole heart, praising him, using the greatest word of praise, glory, and use that word of praise over and over. Glory, glory, glory. And when I call this anointing down upon you, the Holy Ghost will come in if you yield. And he will take you over and speak in another language. And he will give the utterance. 
And friend, that will be the beginning of his great work in your life. Lord, in the name of Jesus, I call the Holy Ghost down upon the people. Receive ye the Holy Ghost in the name of Jesus. Receive ye the Holy Ghost in the holy blood name of Jesus. And friend, keep praising the Lord. Don't stop until the Holy Ghost comes in. God bless you tonight.